All right, what are we kicking off with today? Well, geez, it's been hard to keep up, hasn't it? Um, a very carefully orchestrated transfer of prime ministership by the Labour Party had nothing to do with misogyny, had nothing to do with gas in the tank, it had everything to do with political opportunity and poll numbers. Uh, but Chippy is in, and he has in the last couple of weeks engaged in, in what I'm going to call, it's been called a policy bonfire, I say it is the de of the Labour Party in the hope that they can reconnect with a disconnected electorate and have a crack, have a crack at retaining power uh, at the election, which is meant to be held on October the 14th. So what has been uh, rolled back this week? Well, they've said the um, uh, employment insurance scheme, which was basically employers playing for the dole, that's away, that's gone. Hate speech, what was left of hate speech laws kicked to touch to the uh, Law Commission. Three Waters is going to be changed, but they haven't quite got the courage to face the Maori Caucus and say what they're going to do with that uh, at the moment. Um, and a whole raft of other measures have simply been put on hold. Oh, of course, the merger of Television New Zealand and Radio New Zealand are completely done, dead, dead as dead can be. Um, and it struck me that, well, this is working. Um, Chris Hipkins is running the political narrative it about. It's all about what is the new Prime Minister doing? And because he doesn't have quite the baggage of hatred that Jacinda Ardern does, uh, he's doing well. And Chris Luxon looks like he is scrambling to stand for something other than serving at a McDonald's. And I think this also creates a problem um, for other parties uh, who have been, and I think rightly, been campaigning well on criticism of the more woke or crazy aspects of this Labor administration. So to find out what those opponents think of what has happened in the last couple of weeks... And how might they they might tack or jibe in response? Uh, we are joined now by the leader of the ACT Party, uh, David Seymour. David, thank you for joining us this Friday morning. Hey, good morning. How are you going, Sean? Very well, thank you. Um, man, look, and come can on. Can I just ask, it, it, it yeah. sounds as though you are carefully orchestrating a transition uh, to Ben Espiner at 9.30. What's going on? Have you oh, no, no, I, look, look, I, just wanna, I just want to give a young person a crack. That's all. I'm no, just bringing, bringing on my talent. <laughs> um, and I've got some admin and other stuff to do uh, on Friday uh, I, because it is a Friday. Look, David, okay. there's no doubt this is a different Prime Minister, right? Uh, and there's no doubt that many unpopular policies that you and others were criticising Labor for have been parked. He has come in, and, and this isn't cosmetic change. When you park a policy, when you stop a $750 million merger of the two state broadcasters, you're actually doing something. You can't argue this is all talk, no trousers. Um, firstly, do you think it is enough to give them a chance at the next election? Well, let me just answer that in, in two ways. First of all, um, they have dumped some policies. That is true, but let's not buy into the narrative that this is somehow new and that they're no longer pushing a whole lot of bad policy because they are. So was the biofuels mandate unbelievably stupid? Yes, it was. Are we glad it's gone? Of course we are. The TVNZ, RNZ merger, it was never clear what the purpose of that was. And the income insurance space percent job tax never stacked up. And it's a good thing they've kicked that into the long grass. Uh, if they're prepared to properly reverse three waters, then we'll be the first to congratulate them. However, you've still got a government that is spending almost $130 billion a year, um, up over $40 billion since they came into office five years ago. Uh, you've still got a bureaucracy over 60,000, that's 47,000. Uh, you've got a huge amount of activity coming out of Labor in the labour market as far as fair pay agreements, you're still bashing farmers, you're still bashing landlords, you're still tying up small business and red tape. So the idea that this is some sort of major transition, uh, then you've got education where you've still got the curriculum review, which is really about destroying the transfer of objective knowledge in our view. Uh, all of these things are still happening and we could go on. Uh, however, if I was to 
concedes some ground to the idea there's been a major change. The most significant thing, in our view, for New Zealand's long-term future is they've dumped the idea the government is going to legislate hate speech. Free speech is the foundation of a free society, and everyone, and I credit the platform with this, um, there's been other activists out there, and frankly, ACT takes some credit for this because we've been the yeah. longest and most consistent advocate of free speech. That is a major victory for New Zealand's long-term future this week. So mixed bag, yep, they've dumped some stuff. Actually, they haven't dumped most of the bad stuff. So I just question the premise. But, but let me give you a, a, another answer that I think is also valid. Let's imagine for a moment that we do buy into the narrative. We do accept that they've dumped all the bad stuff. My question to you and to Labor is what happens next? Uh, because if they did dump all their crazy solutions, and they, they haven't, but if they did, they'd be back to 2017, uh, a party with big promises, big problems, and no actual solutions. So the way I look at the political landscape uh, from Act's point of view, uh, we absolutely welcome the opportunity to be the party that's there with the fresh new ideas. How do we get kids to go to school? Well, actually, you know, we've got a pretty comprehensive truancy policy last year. How do we solve the worker shortage? Well, we've got fresh new ideas in immigration. How do we make sure that people from farmers to builders can actually develop their own property? Well, you know, X got about a 30 page uh, document that outlines how we would do proper resource management refor act reform based on property rights. And then there's the elephant in the room. How does New Zealand make sense of the Treaty of Waitangi in 2023 in a way that is consistent with mm. a liberal democracy? Interesting to note this week, and we covered this extensively, the crazy reports out of the uh, Human Rights Commission and their call for a Truth and Reconciliation Commission, rejected by Hipkins publicly rejected by him the idea of truth and reconciliation. And in fact, he raised concerns about the work of the Human Rights Commission in that regard. So when I say de of of uh, the Labour Party or, the, or this Labour administration, that also takes the wind or some of the wind out of the sails of your, I think, justified concerns about the creation of an ethno-state. And it would seem... Um, certainly that the current Prime Minister shares your concerns and is prepared to address them and not entertain that idea. Now let me ask you, well, what is he realistically going to do about it? The curriculum refresh carries on. Uh, you know, this new Natural Built Environments uh, Act or legislation that is supposed to replace the Resource Management Act uh, will have deeper requirements in order for people to consult their local iwi before they can do something on their property. I've seen just in the last 24 hours, uh, people who are contracting to Kainga Ora, who are told they have to demonstrate how they're working with local iwi before they can get something built. Uh, and then there's this question of what exactly is going to happen with Three Waters. As you said in your intro, uh, it's all very well for him to say he's de Labour, uh, but has he told the Maori caucus that? I'm not so sure he has. Well, the indications are, in fact, that... Um and we've got to remember that within Maori Dim itself, there are divisions, uh, David. It would appear that Willie Jackson has said to the iwi chairs, who are the more traditional Maori elite, uh, we're not going to bow to you, there are going to be changes. And he has thrown his lot in, if you like, with urban Maori, uh, who have a far, uh, I think, more practical view of, of the world and Maori Dim's place in it than traditional iwi leaders. So there is certainly change there, is there not? Well, if there is, uh, we're not seeing it in resource management. Uh, we're not seeing it in the targeting of healthcare, which is lazily and divisively done on race, uh, rather than really digging into where the need is and what the true causes of healthcare inequality are. Uh, you know, we've still got it um, in the way that government services contract out. And look, he can criticise the Human Rights Commission all they want, but I bet they'll still be funded uh, to keep producing more divisive and, frankly, ultimately useless reports. So you know, we could play this game all morning, mm. but I'd just make the point that, you know, that, that it's a little bit like an arsonist asking credit for trying to put out your, your, your house fire after they started it. Um, you know, I think they're getting far too much credit. I mean, it's like a burglar, you know, trying to find your stolen goods. Oh, look, here I am to help you. Uh, they're getting far too much credit for this. 
uh, their overall agenda continues uh, to be divisive and interfering in people's lives. Mm. And yet, and yet, you know, we still have a problem that if, if we accept your argument for a moment that they're bonfiring all their policies, where are those fresh new ideas to get kids to school, make it safe to run a dairy, get wasteful spending under control, give people tax relief, and ultimately grow New Zealand's productivity so that we remain a first world country? Because at the moment, with people taking trolleys of groceries out of the supermarkets without paying every day, potholes are all over the road, mm. uh, an emergency response to the Auckland floods that was non-existent, it's getting harder and harder to say, I live in a first world country. Mm. And that is a real problem. Yeah. Uh, David, I, and I understand your answers today. I think, think there have been valid perspectives you've given us, but there is no doubt, is there, just overall, that Chris Hipkins is harder to attack from an opposition politics point of view than Jacinda Ardern was. Her negatives were huge, and she'd become a very big political liability, clearly, on the internal polling and stuff that Labour had done. So does this force, and not just yourself, but uh, National as well, who had been sleepwalking to victory prior to the departure of Jacinda Ardern and still appear to be doing so, um, does this mean that one has to campaign more proactively, as you've just done this morning, on the policies that you have, rather than the failings or the unpopularity of your opponent? Well, I think it does. And like I say, ACT absolutely welcomes that because we've always had a balance between opposing and proposing. I think there's still a lot more opposing to do than, than perhaps you're making out. Uh, but when it comes to proposing, uh, ACT has always been the party. No, people accuse us of all sorts of things, but no one's ever accused us us not putting out, you know, well thought out constructive ideas for how New Zealand can be a better place. Uh, we're constantly putting out documents that share ideas so that if we do form a government uh, with the Nats, then you can be rest assured if you've given your party vote to act, uh, you've helped make sure that there are some fresh new ideas and thinking to make sure that it won't be like when Labor got in and, and formed 200 working groups because they didn't have a clue what to do. Um, you know, we'll, we'll hit the ground running with an agenda mm. to improve New Zealand for people who just want to make a difference in their own lives, who just want to be themselves and not be dragged down and punished for that. Mm. Look, two other issues I, I, I want to lay on you. They're not controversial. I'm not trying to set you up. I'm just interested in your response to them because we're going to be covering them here on the platform. The first one, we have information that Wellington East Girls College had a commencement ceremony uh, this year. They held it on a marae. And as part of that, and the, the protocol, tikanga, whatever you want to call it, of the marae, uh, after 15 minutes of uh, Te Reo opening on the marae, they split the audience by gender, with women and girls going to the back of the marae without speaking rights. This is a state-funded girls' school. What do you think of that, just at first blush and broad principle? Well, I gave a speech earlier uh, this week yeah, where State I of the talked Nation. about the Enlightenment. I, I, I talked, uh, yeah, I talked, I talked about how once upon a time, a guy called Descartes said, je pense que je suis. He said, I think, therefore I am. And that was the beginning of the idea that each and every person is a thinking and valuing being. You don't have to bow down to the dogma and the doctrine of the rulers of the day. And I think if you have that basic insight, then you would say what happened was wrong. People should not be discriminated against, made to sit at the back, uh, because of something about themselves they can't change, such as the agenda. Uh, people should be able to be a thinking and valuing being in and of themselves. And one of the things that came out of the Enlightenment is nobody should be forced into a spiritual or quasi-spiritual way of thinking to fit the dogma and the doctrines of the day. And I think there's far too much of this where people who are in a secular setting are found they're forced to go to a karakia or some sort of religious ceremony uh, in the name of the treaty partnership. I think what we should be championing, and ACT does champion, is the idea of a secular modern society where who you are, your gender, your sex, your sexuality, your ethnicity, that's all a private matter. 
you are a human first and foremost with the same rights and duties as the treaty says. Uh, and that is the basis for getting rid of a lot of this dogma that people are forced to sit through because I don't think it makes the boat go faster. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it is divisive and it is damaging yeah. people. Yeah. And the other issue we're going to deal with uh, straight after you is uh, Rotorua City Council has published a set of criteria for making submissions to that council which gives it the right to discriminate and indeed deplatform people from making submissions that they on a number of criteria might find offensive or problematic. Uh, they were contacted by uh, the Free Speech Union yesterday uh, and the Mayor of Rotorua, Tania Tapsell, would not engage in meaningful dialogue on that and we're going to find out from a member of the Free Speech Union what the consequences of that are. Um, what do you think the free speech battle is won and over or not? Because I would suggest the story says it's not. Well, first of all, I'm astonished to hear that because Tanya Tapsell was a darling of the National Party, uh, was shoulder-tapped and speculated to be a National MP, um, and there's a lot of excitement in National that they might have her as a candidate. She decided she'd rather be the Mayor of Rotorua. Um, so it's disappointing to hear that, you know, a person who can be, uh, sounds like, behind that and then won't engage on it um, <coughs> could have ended up being a national MP, perhaps the MP for Tauranga, um, instead of, uh, what's his name, who they ended up with? Yeah. Um, bit of trouble. Yeah. Uh, so that's the first observation I'd make. The second observation I'd make is that, and I go back to this enlightenment thinking, um, the idea of participating each and every person as a thinking and valuing being with a right to participate on their terms because they are human, because they have value, not to be shut down and excluded by the dogma and the doctrine, that is at heart uh, what we are talking about in New Zealand today. All right. Hey, David. Yeah. People don't bother. David, thank you very uh, much indeed. Don't yeah, sorry. You, uh, we've got a bit of lag there, Sean, but yeah. anyway, look, I, I hope that um, your, your last uh, couple of hours are good and I'm sure Ben will do a great job. <laughs> Thank you. David Seymour there, leader of the ACT Party, and uh, catching up with him in the wake of what has been a momentous few weeks uh, in politics. And what I took from him there is, oh, we're going to have to transition to more proacti proactively being about what we stand for rather than what Labour is crap at. Uh, let's have a quick break and then uh, we get into the story about Rotorua.